Hi guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James. Today we're going to look at it. I've got a confession, guys. I said that this video was called Seven Steps on How to Get Watertight and Solder Joints. I lied. There's actually a half more step that I'm giving you guys for free at the end of the video. It's seven and a half steps on how to get watertight solder joints and make them look absolutely fantastic. Please like the video, please comment below if you think we missed anything out, and please subscribe to our videos. We've got over 300 plumbing videos online right now. Also, I run a vlog channel called Times with James where you can learn about history, documentaries, reviews, and also see what I get up to outside the world of plumbing as well. We've got some very special links at the end of this video that only people who watch the whole of the video can get to. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. There's one thing you gotta do. That's number one, lose weight after Christmas. And number two, hold tight. So guys, I've got a few fittings here today and also a little bit of 22 mil pipe, which for your normal DIY is probably gonna be the most challenging kind of soldering you're gonna come across. Let's just pop these down here out of the way. All the tools that you see us using today in this video, you can buy on our Amazon shop. There's a link to our Amazon shop in the description of this video and also in the top pin comment. So the things you're going to need to get a successful solder is number one, your blowtorch. You're also gonna need a flux that you use quite often. You're also gonna need, oh blimey, it's just come apart. Oh man, what's happened there? <laughs> Why has that happened, man? Probably gonna need a heat mat, obviously some solder, something to clean your pipe down with, and also, very importantly, something to clean and cool down your pipe work as well. So before you get started, it might be just a good idea, you find yourself an old rag, like this absolute lovely beauty here. Give it a little bit of a wetting up, ready for what you're gonna do. Butters rag, that is. <laughs> So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is actually get your pipe and actually clean it. I use either emery cloth. So if you have a look closely here, you'll see that we've got this nice and clean. So look, that's nice clean there. But also you can use wire wall, it's completely up to you. Anything you think is gonna get your pipe nice and clean just like so. So then your fitting can go on there just like that, nice and easily, okay? It's nice and clean, there's no problems. Also make sure that inside the fitting is clean as well. So as you can see here, these are lovely and clean now, ready to go. We can pop that on there like so, and that fits in nicely like that. We've got no problems at all. Do that to both bits of pipe that you're gonna be soldering onto. This is what us plumbers take the most amount of time doing, cleaning the pipe and making sure that the surfaces are clean, ready for us to work on. So there we go, that's done. We can have a look. Those two just like so. And now we've got very clean joints either side here. And we also know that the fitting inside is clean as well. Number two, and this is super important, make sure there's no water in the pipe. That's so, so important. Now it can be very difficult for you to get water out of horizontal pipe or things like that. Make sure that if you can, you've got something like a wet vac so you can vacuum out any of the water or you can be really sneaky and use an old plumber's trick of putting bread up the inside of the pipe and that will hopefully soak up any water in the time it takes you to do the soldering. But I wouldn't recommend that. It's an old school way of doing things. Personally, I've never come across it actually being a problem, but let's face it guys, we don't want bits of bread flying around the heating system. So point number two is to make sure that the joint is dry inside and ready to go. Before we move on, I'm gonna have a nice swig of the old coffee boo. Mm. That's cold. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Just have a lack of coffee to be. Number three, number three. This is super important. And if you do it well, we'll make sure that if you have a problem with runs, maybe that will be something that will get over this problem. But flux your pipe properly. So what we're gonna do, we've got our flux here on our fluctuator. We just pop our flux in like so, just like that. Okay, make sure there's none that goes in the pipe. If you think any has, get a small cloth, but make sure you don't cut your finger while you're doing it. You shouldn't ever put flux on the inside of the solder joint, because if you do that, you can end up with flux inside the pipe itself. And if you've got an old acid flux that doesn't get washed away by water, it can cause pinholes and leaks. I'm just gonna do that to the other one here. And then just pop that on there like so. Now a good thing to do at this point, and I don't see this in many other YouTube videos, is to wipe off any excess flux that's around the outside of the fitting. If you're my bro Drew Styles, and you can follow Drew over on Instagram and Twitter, I'll leave his links below. Um, this is how he does it. He sent me this lovely little phone message showing me how. Hey, up. my tip for a nice solder Drew would be to remember to wipe your excess flux off before you start feeding the solder in. Stops it from running further than you need to, getting any snotties on the bottom, and remember to feed it, not wipe it. So now we've got our joint flux, we're effectively ready to get soldering. This is the bit that takes practice, okay? Everything else you can learn how to do and you know how to do, 
but actually applying heat to the joint and getting everything going like that will take some practice. So don't expect miracles first time round. Let's just move my bag off here. By the way, you can even buy the bag on my Amazon shop. Oh yeah! So sometimes as well, you're gonna use your heat mat to prepare the area, make sure of that. But because we're nice and high up here, I know that's not gonna be a problem on this joint. So step number four is gentle, even heat, evenly applied over the fitting and pipe. Let's switch to super close up camera angle. Now, so guys, number one, we light our blowtorch. Depending on which one you've got, this is a Rothenberger Superfire 2, which is what most plumbers you're gonna find in the UK use. Uh, very robust, so just get it going like that, and then we're just gonna turn that right down. I try and hold this near to my mic, so you can sort of hear what we're going at. We don't want it doing this. It's just, that's just too much. So we want a nice, slow, even heat. That's really, really important. Now, make life easy for yourself and get a little bit of solder out ready to go. So, we'll get our heat going. Now I'm gonna stand up and we're actually gonna get this soldered on. So nice, even heat, low, steady heat, evenly applied. Now this is when I'm gonna say as well about step number five. You're going to want to have a little bit of patience, okay? In the words of a famous song, a little bit of patience goes a long way when you're doing this sort of work. So look, we're just evenly heating up the whole fitting. Sometimes you get underneath, make sure that's nice and evenly heated up. And if you think you're ready, you get a little bit of smoke maybe out at the end of the fitting like so. You think, oh, maybe it's now time just to touch a little bit of solder on. So look, we're just gonna do that and then we take the heat away and we're just gonna touch a bit on. So we're not quite there yet. There we go, that's running now. So look, now we can just pop that in there like so, and just work that round. Help the solder round with a little bit of heat. Same for this one here. And in it goes. See, all the way round, that's now done. I can guarantee you, I'm just gonna pop a little bit on the back here. If you do get a little bit of bird poo, and your boss is gonna have a go at you for this, just flick it off with this. If you're an apprentice, your boss is gonna be like, what are you doing, bruv? I'll just mention step six now, and that is to make sure that you use the right solder. We need to use lead-free solder on potable water sources. Lead is a poison, we can't have it in there. Uh, lead-free solder tends to be a little bit more runny. Oh, guys, the old lead was just a joy to solder with, believe me, it was brilliant. Step number seven is to clean the fitting down cool it down and this is where our little rag becomes very handy. So we can just cool that down like so. I usually give that a bit of a twist. I'm going to do one more solder for you in a minute using a different flux as well. Now what I tend to do now is just clean the fitting up. Use a little bit of, uh... oh god that is still a bit warm. Hey hey, I'll give you a chance to actually look at the fitting okay. This is important this bit. Also now, make sure you've got the fitting nice and clean, and if the fitting is gonna be fully on display for everyone to see, there's no harm in just brassoing it up quickly. Pop a little bit of brasso on there, get that nice and clean. So guys, I know we've got a little bit of a blob run on there, but this has run all the way around. Because we've cleaned it so well, we can now look actually all around the fitting and see that it's run really well. And because we've cleaned inside the fitting, we've cleaned the pipes itself, we know now that we've got a watertight solder. Don't take my word for it right, that learning to solder isn't something you're gonna pick up in two seconds time. I mean, I'm not 100% happy with the solder I've just done here, but I know that if I was doing it under floorboards or something like that, you know, when it comes to looks, aesthetics, it doesn't really matter. I know that's gonna function really well as a solder. Don't take my word for it that learning to solder is difficult. Just look what happened when I did an Ask the Manufacturer video a couple of weeks ago with my mate Olivia from Ideal Standards. Yeah, touch it on there. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh straight no! Away. Straight away, turn it off. Turn it. Oh. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna very quickly, as an extra for you guys, I'm just gonna use some Laco Flux and do one more joint. You make me feel So guys, before we finish, we're just gonna reiterate the seven steps to make sure that you get watertight soldered joints. But before we do that, please can you like this video, please comment below if you think we've missed anything out, and by all means, hit that subscribe button. It's really important. There's gonna be some links in a minute so you can go over to my vlog channel where I do documentaries about history and random stuff. Point number one. 
clean pipe. That's number one. Step number two, make sure there's no water in it. Step number three, once you've cleaned the pipe and there's no water in there, flux the pipe properly and wipe away any excess flux. Step four, think about the heating process. Evenly apply the heat and make sure that your soldering torch isn't blaring away like an absolute mad thing. Step five, have some patience before you apply the solder, okay? Which brings me on to step six, make sure you use the right solder. And step seven, make sure you've got a wet rag handy, not only for cleaning down the fitting, but also for making sure that you cool it off nicely. And step seven and a half, because we're gonna give you a little extra tip here, if you want your joints to look amazing, use Brasso to clean them up, okay? And use a bit of wire wool as well. So wire wool first, then Brasso. That's how you do it, guys. It works for me, it works for lots of other plumbers as well. But if you've got your own way of doing it, please tell us in the comments section below. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. Hold tight! Thanks for watching all the way to the end, guys. Here are those special links that I was talking about. If you want to watch our very latest video, click on that one. Check out Times with James, my vlog channel. Doing loads of stuff over there at the moment. Going over to Berlin to have a look at Stasi Prison. Learning to fly and doing loads of other stuff. And also go to our official merchandise and grab yourself a t-shirt.